Hey, James here. This Behringer UMC202 arrived in the post a couple of days ago, so let's unbox it quickly. It's nice for Behringer to include this snazzy sticker and three user manuals in different languages. Right, let's unbox the interface itself and responsibly dispose of this silica pack. Now to get this fiddly plastic packaging off. This is the interface itself. It's quite a smart little unit with a full metal construction from the sound and feel of it. I was concerned that this interface came without a USB cable, but that was hidden away in the polystyrene packing, so nothing to worry about there. I'll be comparing this interface with some other similar interfaces later in this video. Going along this interface, it has two XLR quarter inch inputs so you can plug a guitar or microphone into either of these. Next to that we have gain knobs for both of those as well as a button for switching between line instrument inputs as well as a handy little pad control for attenuation. And finally we have a direct monitor button as well as a headphone port and volume knob for your speakers in the headphones. Moving on to the back we have the USB port for power as well as speaker outputs and the Kensington lock and the most annoying part of the interface the phantom power is on the back which means that you'll have to perform the reach around every time you need some power. I wish they stuck this on the front but I'll give Behringer a pass as I'm not sure where I put it on an already packed front end. I plugged the interface into my late 2013 MacBook Pro running Logic 10.5 with no effects added and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. There was barely any noticeable noise when I wasn't recording the guitar and even with my very hot pickups there was plenty of headroom once I'd activated the pad switch. I have to admit that I did get slightly sidetracked when messing with the interface, but that can only be a good sign. I'm recording this video through the, uh, through the Behringer interface, and I have to say that even with a cheap SM57 uh, clone, that I am a little bit impressed by it. The preamp is very clean, with once again plenty of headroom for uh, recording loud vocals for example when singing. I put up a post on uh, Facebook just after I unboxed the interface and asked what questions people have. So uh, let's see if I can answer them here. How does this differ compared to the Steinberg UR22C and the Focusrite 2i4 slash 2i2? Okay, so I can't compare it to the Steinberg offering as I've never used it, but I will compare it to a couple interfaces that I have used. Before I purchased this interface, my daily driver interface was the first generation IRIG HD. And it's fair to say that the Behringer blows it out of the water for most uses. The IRIG does win on convenience however, as it's much more portable and doesn't require any accessories to plug it into my iPad 6th gen. Next to compete with the Behringer is the 2i2 from Focusrite. I have used the Focusrite 2i2 and whilst I would say that the Focusrite is slightly better in terms of build quality, Behringer holds its own where it matters, with the Midas preamps sounding very good and punching well above their weight, with delivering a sound that easily matches the 2i2 for a lot less money. Another interface in a similar price category to the UMC202 HD is the Zoom U22, and honestly that gets crushed by the Behringer in every single way. Does it work with an iPhone slash iPad? Kind of. I mean, technically, it should have been as simple as plugging the interface into a camera connection kit and then hooking that up to my iPad. I've spoken to quite a few people and it seemed to work for them without a hitch. However, I don't have an official camera connection kit and that was my downfall. I had to connect the interface to a powered USB hub and then connect that up to my iPad and it worked. So that, I guess, is a bit of a word of warning to buy the official genuine Apple product rather than trying to get a cheap deal on Amazon. Right, so what are my final thoughts on this interface? Well, I bought this interface for university as I thought that I was growing out of the iRig a little bit. I spent just over £60 on this interface and I'm blown away by the quality you can get for the price. It easily competes with interfaces that are closing in on double the price and it does actually have some features that those interfaces are just missing. 
I would wholeheartedly recommend this interface for anyone who wants a good, cheap interface for the home setup, or someone who needs a cheap two-input interface for on the go. And with that, we've come to the end of the video. I'm hoping to do a couple more reviews in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And thanks for watching. Uh,